uh, Stephen Englander of Standard Charter. Good morning, Stephen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Pleasure to be with you. So when we look at the equity markets, foreign exchange, bond market, I was wondering what's driving the price action at this point? Well, that's unclear. As, as you were mentioning, the, there are issues with respect to um, earnings expectations and some of the tax and, you know, um, they've been performing very weakly. There are concerns about the Fed and how hawkish it's going to be. And um, this week, over the last few days, there are also concerns about Russia and the Ukraine that seem to be spilling over into FX markets and at times into broader risk sentiment. And when it comes to the dollar index, by the way, we do see a pretty stable dollar index in this past week, once again, steady above the 95 mark. What are your expectations if the Fed was about to be, or better, is going to be extremely hawkish on Wednesday? Well, first you have to define hawkish. The, the market's priced in four Probably four, four rates instead of, uh, four rate hikes instead of three, let's say. Well, I, I think if, if Powell does anything that sounds as if the Fed is endorsing four hikes, that would be hawkish. I think you'd see certainly the front end of the market yields rise sharply because I don't think the market expects uh, an open endorsement of four given that the dot plot suggested three. Um, in the short term, it would probably be dollar positive because it would be both risk off from a market perspective and, and of course yields would go up. Um, but you'd probably see some concern about growth in, in the longer term and you could see some um, you know, curve flattening as a, as a consequence. I should say, I, we, we don't expect him to be that hawkish, but if he were, that's how it would, would play out. Well, what is your biggest concern? I mean, what's the biggest concern for, for markets and economic outlook in European? Is it the inflationary pressures? Is it the Fed? Well, I, I think right now everything turns on inflation. I, I, you know, we expect inflation to turn down beginning Q2, uh, but that might not be quick enough to, uh, you know, prevent at least, you know, we expect like two hikes in, in the first half of the year. Um, that's probably not quick enough to prevent them from hiking. I think if the market sees any kind of opening for inflation to come down, um, it would be very positive for asset markets that the a lot of what's priced in now is the fear that inflation is going to stay at elevated levels, the tail risk associated with that. And were that risk to be reduced, I think that the market perspective would be much stronger. Um, and the dollar's perspective actually would be much weaker because I think we would see a lot of emerging market currencies rally off that. I was wondering um, if we take a look at euro dollar so far at 1.30 and 48 and I just wanted to consider uh, way more hawkish Fed specifically compared to the ECB uh, which is still let's say on hold when it comes to rate hikes in 2022 at least for now despite of course inflation for the eurozone at 5% uh, year over year. So I was wondering what's the range in your opinion for the euro dollar um, in the current quarter? Well. You know, there's always a chance it could go back down to test the Q4 lows with, with the 112 handle. Um, but I think the, the ECB is a little bit like where the Fed was in, in September or October of this year, um, having a very optimistic forecast that inflation is not going to be there, having the market somewhat skeptical um, on the optimism of inflation. So in, it, we, we, there's plenty of hawkishness now priced in to the Fed. Um, the market's kind of worried that if the ECB sort of turns even a little bit hawkish or opens the door to inflation kind of being more persistent because they've been adamant that's going to be at an extremely low level. Um, the upside for the euro in that case would, would actually be significant. We expect it to close the year at 121. So we're, we're you know seeing both broad dollar weakness and perhaps some indication that the ECB is, is backing away from um, maybe towards the end of the year, of the, of the extreme op optimism that they've shown. And, and final take, Stephen, I was wondering w what is going to be the major driver for the economic growth in 2022? Because we do already observe a little bit of slowdown if we just go to um, consider the latest macro data from the U.S. and globally, of course. You know, there's still a big reopening trade that, that's left to be done. And I think that's going to be the biggest source of growth. Um, 
I, there are issues in the labor market that I think that late um, employment growth was slow, but in much of the world, there's a lot of pent up domestic demand. You know, e even in countries that usually grow on exports, there's room to grow on domestic demands, and, and that would be the major source of growth that we would see. Thank you very much, Stephen Englander, um, uh, Global Head of G10 FX Research and North America Macro Strategy Standard Charter. Thank you for joining us and have a great day ahead. You too, thank you.